hello guys welcome to my channel so as you know we studied like around five six parts in the cell cycle right like that contains the cell cycle and the cell cycle control system mitosis everything so and that's a very long process and that's why it took so much of different parts to make that so i am making the summary of the cell cycle like the one that we studied in all the parts together i'm just trying to make like in 15 minutes the entire cell cycle so i draw and mentioned every important things in the cell cycle so when we think about cell cycle so we'll start from here right so it basically has two phase m phase and interface right and the m phase then is divided into two consists of a mitosis cytokinesis remember that and the interface has g1 phase s phase and g2 phase so it goes basically start with the g1 phase then s phase g2 phase and then the m phase that has our mitosis and cytokinesis that is the cell cycle basically right and this cell cycle is controlled by different molecules right chemical interaction and everything so this cell cycle has a cell cycle control system so the cell cycle machinery this machinery governs the control system by activating and deactivating key proteins and protein complexes that's the main role of cell cycle control system so what are the proteins that are responsible for activating and deactivating or responsible for the cell cycle so that is protein kinases so all the regulations all this regulation i have mentioned it here so all this regulation of the cell cycle is carried largely through phosphorylation and dephosphorylation i explained that in detail as well in the cell cycle like what is phosphorylation so the protein kinases is responsible right this kinase is on and off at the appropriate time that is partly responsible right and how this sorry so how this protein kinases work so this protein kinase is responsible for the cell cycle correct and this protein kinases is actually inactive so how to act how this protein kinases are active so the responsibility to turn on and off of this is partly responsible of another set of protein that are called cyclins right that's the name here cyclins so how it happens so i saw i draw the simple diagram so this is a kinase that's an inactive this is a cyclin so when kinase and cyclin joins together so it becomes a cyclin dependent kinase right so that is why it's called cd case but it's still not active so in order to active this CD case, they must need to phosphorylate. So after the phosphorylation, so after the phosphorylation, then it become an active CD case, right? So this is our kinases, right? So there are different type of kinases. So kinases of cell cycle control systems are known as CD case. Why it is known as CDK? Because it's cyclin dependent kinase. These kinases are dependent on cyclin to become active. So the cyclin triggering the phases by acting on kinases. So what are the cyclins? So cyclin A, these are the actual name of the cyclin. The cyclin A forms S CDK. So that is responsible here. Cyclin D forms G1 CDK. That is responsible here. And cyclin B, that is an M CDK. That is responsible here right so this is how it is done and another thing that cell cycle uses a combination of mechanisms so this is responsible as we know the cyclin cdks are responsible for driving this phases and cell cycle uses different mechanisms or a combination of mechanism for blocking the activity we look for starting the activity so the blocking the activity like for example if dna is damaged or anything that is wrong so they need to block right so pausing the cell cycle by blocking the activity of cdks so what the cell cycle need to do they have to block the cdks once the cdk is blocked it will not move further right and it is done by cdk inhibitor protein so the example is like we have our active cdk here right 
So there is a binding of P27. So this is a protein, a kind of protein. So once the P27 binds to this, our CDK, it will become inactive. And this is from G1 to S transition. G2 to M transition. So the CDK, right? And then cycling. So how it is become activated? Here, the MCDK should be active. So, right, so we have yours, our cycling D, uh, sorry, cycling B and this M cycling, sorry, M cycling and the cycling B, CDK. So that will together make a CDK. When they join together, it's still in inactive by the inhibitory protein V1. And when it will become active, as we discussed by phosphorylation, so it will be active by phosphatase CDC25. So this is the phosphatase, that's where phosphorylase the inactive MCDK and then it will active the MCDK, right? And the cycling destruction can help drive the transition from one phase to another because here if the G1 CDK is active. So once the G1 CDK is turned off, then it will move to the S phase, the same here, then same here and same there, all right? So that was our first thing, like which protein is responsible and the different mechanism. Now we'll see the different phases, G1S phase that we studied, what are things are responsible to start the, start the cell cycle. So after that, so I removed some part and like draw the new one. So we'll study the mitogens, right? So what is studied regarding the mitogens? So they are extracellular signals produced by other cells, right? So in order to proliferate the cells, mitogens are required and the signals that are sent by other cells that are called mitogens and that will stimulate the cell proliferation, right? So there is one way, one method in which mitogens stimulate cell proliferation that is by inhibiting the RB protein. So the RB is retinoblastoma, right? If you remember, retinoblastoma protein, right? That are found in the tumors of the eye, right? So these are found in abundant in the vertebrate of nucleus, right? So how it does? So every cell has a mitogen receptors. So when the signals are sent, mitogen, so this dot is a mitogen. So this will attract it to the mitogen receptor. And when it binds to the mitogen receptor, so that will activate the mitogen receptor. And the mitogen receptor will send signals inside the cell. So that signal, it says here signals to activate the CD case. That signal will activate the CD case that we studied here that are responsible to proliferate or to start the cell cycle, right? And that signal, so in the cell, we have the CD case and there is also this RB protein, this retinose. So this, this is an active RB protein, why? Because this RB protein is holding a transcription regulator in an inactive. So this is, if this is active, so holding the transcription regulator, to not become active, right? So this is an inactive transcription regulator holded by an active RB protein. So once the signals are active, CDK becomes active, right? We have an active CDK. And then we have the same thing outside here, right? So this will act on this by phosphorylating of the RB protein. So active CDK will phosphorylate the RB protein. That means the adding of the phosphate group Maybe I, I mentioned it wrong here, if I remember correctly. So, all right, so first we'll see this. So it will phosphorylate the RB protein. So RB protein will release the transcription regulator and the transcription regulator will become active and the transcription will begin, then the translation and then the cell proliferation and the cell cycle begins. So mitogen is responsible for the cell proliferation, remember that. And yeah, so what, what I think I mentioned wrong is that, so when the M cycle, M cycling joins with the CDK, it becomes M CDK and there is an inhibitory protein. So that phosphorylates 
this MCDK. So there will be P present here, phosphatase. And in order to become active, this phosphatase should be removed. So that's why it says it should be dephosphorylation here, dephosphorylation. And this phosphate should be removed. Why the CDC25 and then the amcycline will become active. All right, so this was the method how the cell cycle starts by the mitogen. And this is a one way mechanism that we know that how it activates our cell cycle. Right, right after mitogen, one more possibility if the DNA is damaged in G1, so the cell cycle can arrest the cycle in a G1 phase. DNA damage can arrest cell cycle in the G1 phase. How? So when the DNA is damaged, specific protein kinases respond by both activating the P53 protein and halting its normal rapid degradation. So for example, DNA, this is our damaged DNA. This is our P53, that is inactive. If the DNA is not damaged, if the cell cycle is moving properly, in the absence of DNA damage, P53 is degraded in proteosome. Right, but if the DNA is damaged, then what will happen? It phosphorylate will rylation will begin by specific protein kinases that will activate P53. That that's why I uh, enter P in the between of this P53. That means activated and phosphorylated P53. So the activated P53 accumulates and stimulate the transcription of the gene that encodes the CDK inhibitor. So this specifically act on a transcription of a gene and then gene will in turn encode a CDK inhibitor protein that is P21. So this is P21 and this is our P53 that will start accumulating and stimulating the P21 then the transcription will begin. P21 RNA will form, that is our translation, and then we'll get our P21 CDK inhibitor protein, and that will act on the active CDKase. For example, this is our active CDKase, and then it will like hold the active CDKase and stops the active CDK and becomes inactive CDK. And this is how it holds the cycle in the G1 unless the DNA is repaired, right? And if the DNA is not repaired, then the cell cycle will not begin. And if the P53 is not present, the DNA, the cell cycle goes on, then there will be mutation, right? And in most of the cancerous cell, there is something wrong in this P53, if it's missing or defective or whatever the reason. So, and the last is our M phase that consists of mitosis and cytokinesis. So, this is our sister chromatid. So, how it becomes when the M phase comes. So, like the two sister chromatids are tied with the cohesins and they are compacted with condensins. I wrote it here. This is how it looks. So, the cohesin is the protein that tie together the two adjacent sister chromatids in each duplicated chromosome and condenses help coil each sister chromatin in a smaller and a compact structure right so until the so from g1 phase so one procedure is going on with the centrosomes so this is the centrosome so it starts so it has an own cycle it start duplicating in g2 and s phase it's become like this not separated but when the starting of m phase it starts to separate and when the prophase and uh, starts the pro metaphase it goes around the cell so i'm not drawing the picture of the mitosis because that's too complicated for me like all the steps to draw so i'm just putting uh, images of the mitosis so as you can see on your screen prophase so what is happening at the prophase, the duplicated chromosomes, each consisting of the two closely associated sister chromatid condense. This is the one thing happened and the outside of the nucleus, the mitotic spindle assembles between the two centrosome. So the centrosome is separating and it's coming on the side of the cell, forming the mitotic spindle, right? Then the next step will begin. 
that is our pro meta phase so in pro meta phase that start abruptly with the breakdown of nuclear envelope and in the pro meta phase as you can see the nuclear envelope it's in the pieces now in the fragments and the chromosomes can now attach to the spindle microtubules via the kinetochore and undergo an active movement right and after the pro metaphase metaphase begins right so the metaphase has the chromosomes that are aligned at the equator of the spindle right now you can see the chromosomes are aligned at the equator midway between the spindle pole and the kinetochore microtubules on each sister chromatid attached to the opposite poles of the spindle that you can see also in the images the kinetochore micro microtubule as why it's called kinetochore microtubules because the micro microtubule is attaching the kinetochores right and after metaphase anaphase happens so in the anaphase the sister chromatids now synchronously separate and are pulled slowly toward the spindle poles now they are attached so now it's time to pull the chromatids toward the spindle pole pole to which they are attached and the kinetochore microtubules get shorter and the spindle poles also move apart both contributing to the chromosome segregation and the last phase of mitosis is the telophase and as you can see in the picture during the telophase the two sets of chromosome arrive at the poles of the spindle right so the chromosome are now at the poles of the spindle a new nuclear envelope resembles around each set completing the formation of a two nuclei and marking the end of the mitosis so the division of cytoplasm begin with the assembly of the contractile ring and after as the mitosis is done cytokinesis begin as you can see in the picture during the cytokinesis the cytoplasm is divided into two of actin and myosin filament which pinches the cell into two daughters each with one nucleus and this is how our cell is divided guys and we have our cell division all right guys so that was the entire process of mitosis cytokinesis and that's the entire summary of our cell cycle all right guys i tried to compact everything in just one summarize the entire different parts of our cell cycle videos in just one all right thank you guys for watching and i hope this helped you and don't forget to subscribe to the channel